This is a Power 98.7 podcast. Now we're talking. Subscribe to Power 98.7 podcasts in iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. There's more on power987.co.za. Let's talk Orania for a second. Let's let's talk about where it comes from. When was it established? How was it established? What purpose? How has it developed? How does it work? Do they have their own flag? Do they have their own currency? How does it, what are their perspectives on the current South Africa? Do they want to be integrated? All that and more. We're going to understand. And you know what, Power Family as well, in, in being able to understand this conversation, I'm also going to give you an opportunity to weigh in on 0861987000. And if you've got questions when it comes to Orania or even comments about it, please make use of our phone lines. We want to get as many of you engaging with the subject matter as possible. Alternatively, you can drop us a voice note on 0833037093. We are joined now by the head of the Orania movement, Just Stratum, uh, just to shed some light on, on Orania. We're getting to understand Orania. Just, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Welcome to Power Lunch. Thank you very much. It's a privilege to speak to you, and uh, I hope that we can have a fruitful conversation Yeah, and definitely. speak about a lot of the misconceptions about Orania and also try to understand one another better. I'm looking 100%. forward to that. 100%. Just, maybe let's, let's talk history first. Give us a history lesson. The concept okay. of Orania or the genesis of Orania, where does Orania come from and when was it established? You're asking a very important question. I think it's a, it's a great point to start because as we know in South Africa, everything has got a historical connotation. And uh, in order to understand today and in order to understand tomorrow, we must also understand yesterday. So let's paint a picture about the history of Orania that a lot of people might not know or that might be might be unfamiliar with. So the common conception about Urania is that Urania is a little town which was established uh, around about the end of apartheid for a lot of people who were maybe angry that apartheid ended or wanted to continue apartheid. That is a wrong conception to have about Urania. Urania is uh, one of the only communities, I think, definitely the only community in South Africa that was founded around an idea. And that idea is, is not something that started uh, with the end of apartheid. The idea of Urania is much older than the physical manifestation in terms of the town that was created. The Urania idea was heavily researched by a group of people calling themselves Sabra and also later the Urania workers. And they said in, in the time frame of the 60s and the 70s, and also in the 80s later on, that Afrikaners, in order to make decisions about ourselves in terms of things like um, our religion, our language, our culture, should not try to rule over the entirety of South Africa. What we should do is we should concentrate as a people in one geographical area, and there we can make some decisions regarding ourselves. Remember now that this was in a stage when Afrikaners was in control of the country in terms of political, mm. economical, military power, and National so on. Party, in that basically. time frame, Professor Karl Bosov and Dr. Chris Uester said, listen, we must think of something entirely different, and instead of trying to rule over the entire country, we must get ourselves a place of our own and give other people the opportunity to rule over themselves as well, make their own decisions. Mm. And that manifested in three things. Mm. And if all the listeners only remember these three things, I think we made um, massive progress. And that three things is Afrikaners should have their own piece of land, which they legally acquired. Afrikaners should have their own institutions. That is things from uh, schools to churches to, to socioeconomical help to a chamber of commerce to all that kind of things. And thirdly, very important, Afrikaners must break away from the idea that certain work, meaning menial labor, mm -hmm. is only for specific races in this country. We must break away from that idea. And what we must become is a people that do all our own work. And that is the founding principle of Urania to a large extent. So that means if Afrikaners want the future, 
We cannot misuse, and, and, and let's be honest about each other. In South Africa, there was a system based on race where uh, labor was politicized and where, where, where cheap labor was always available. Urania broke away from that idea, and that, that system is still existing in South Africa. It's a reason for a lot of inequality. And Urania says the only way to get past that is to create a system where we do all our own work in Urania, from cleaning toilets to building houses to working in the municipality. We do all our own work. Very, very important. And that is the founding ideas of Urania. That manifested um, when uh, Professor Karl Bosov and Dr. Chris Hewitt and others bought the town um, and people started moving in under those, let's call it frame, that, that reference frame. And they started here in the very arid Karua, which is a dry area, not a lot of rain, and they started to build something where Afrikaners can prosper. So if we have to understand, Professor Karl Bosov, Dr. Chris Jurster, um, and Sabra, they bought the piece of land in the, in the Northern Cape? Yeah, that is correct. The, the piece of, of land was actually bought from the government. The apartheid government. Yes, it was. Okay. Yes, it was okay. in 1991. It was bought from the apartheid government, but obviously the politics were already changing, and that was uh, confirmed later on when there was a land claim later on in Urania's history, which was found not to be um, uh, something that was, was 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 legitimate in terms of of, of changing anything that um, that Urania at that stage already was under the new government. That that happened in the new South Africa. So then, if we understand the the workings of of orania and we're going to get into the issues around you know obviously the integration to south africa what happened and all of that but when we're speaking about who's allowed in orania yours is a perception that black people are not allowed in orania is that true they're not allowed to live there as part of the community is that true so I think the question should rather be, who wants to take up the responsibility to create an Af- Afrikaner homeland? We say, Urania is a home for Afrikaners. Now, it's interesting that we get this question a lot, mm. but very seldom we have we had the question, are there people from different cultures as Kozas or Zulus or Venda or Peri that wanted to come and live in Urania? And I think that manifests also in our relationship with the Koza community Mnyameni in the Eastern Cape, which is a Koza community, with which we have a good relationship in terms of liaison, in terms of learning from each other, in terms of helping each other uh, uh, get over challenges in our communities, in, in, in terms of learning self-sufficiency from each other. <clears throat> so it's very, very seldom the media ask, are there any black people that want to commit their life's work to building out the Afrikaner heimat or home. Are there any black people that want to do that? Because they have a say in that too, and it's, it's um, to take a voice away from that. Who wants to take up that responsibility? Are there people, are there other cultures as the Zulu or a Koza who want to give up their own culture and, and take up Afrikaner culture? Would they want to do that? Would they be allowed to do that, Just? Well, anybody that wants to come and live in Urania can go through the process will always be treated objectively and legitimate as our processes have been tested by the Human Rights Commission and others and then shown to be legitimate within the frame of the law and the Constitution and that, they, that we can, can have our um, right to residency processes. So anyone can apply mm. and anyone has the right to go, go through that process and yeah. uh, see for themselves. I think a more important question to ask is, a person that wants to come and live here, whoever that might be, in a, in a good intentions conversation, I would probably say to them, sir, come to Urania. If you are, say, for example, a Zulu or a Koza, come to Urania, come and have a look, see, listen, speak to people, see if this is the place that you want to dedicate your life to. First answer that question and make sure that it is something that you want to, to be dedicated to. Mm. So do that with good intentions. Come here, come and speak to us, and come and see for yourself. Um, and if you, if you then honestly want to come and live here in the Afrikaner home, do apply for the right to residency like, like all Afrikaners. And now, 
and let's address another misconception about Turania. No, no before, is, we, we, before we go to the misconceptions, are there currently any black or colored people? Because colored people are also Afrikaans speaking. Are there no. any black Afrikaans speaking people or colored Afrikaans speaking people that are currently residing in Orania? I'm going to answer your question in two phases. The one is an important one. The one is to say Afrikaans is a language which we are very um, uh, proud and love very much. It's not a culture. Afrikaans is just a language. Our culture is much more uh, than, than just a language as if I learn Zulu or Kosa or English, doesn't make me an Englishman or a Zulu or a Kosa. So that's the one thing. The other thing is never have Urania conducted any racial tests. So I can seriously not answer you uh, that question. You're welcome. People are welcome to come and look for themselves and they can judge, judge them, the people living in Urania, based on the color of their skin and say, are they black, are they, are they colored, or what are they? Um, but I don't think that is the way to continue into the future. Urania is based on culture. And if people want to give that uh, racial um, flavor and come and say this person is a little bit lighter, this person is a little bit darker, probably they are going to discriminate very, very much. But they can come and look for themselves what they judge as white or non-white. Yeah, yes, look, the whole purpose of this is so that we can understand, right? It's not, an, it's not a conversation where we, where we fight each other. It's a conversation yeah, where we try to yeah. understand each other. That's what I'm saying. And even the difficult conversations and the difficult questions, yeah. just for the purpose of understanding, um, you know, they, 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 we, we need to be able to engage on, on, on such, yeah. as I said. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to also the, is it true that it's semi-autonomous? Do the people yeah. of Irania have their own flag? No. Yeah. Can I, can I just interrupt you there for a second? I just want to refer back to one more thing and then I'm going to answer that question. That yeah. is the mis- another misconception about Urania in terms of culture and in terms of who might, may live here. So say, for example, and it happens a lot, that people from, uh, from, from Europe mm. want to come and live in Urania. Say, for example, it, uh, a person from, from Polish descent or a Dutch person or a Russian person uh, or what, what, what might that be? In, in any case, it might be. And they want to come and live in Urania, and they can't speak Afrikaans. They do not follow our uh, Christian religion, our faith, which is very important to us. It's the cornerstone of what Urania is to a large extent. Mm. Uh, and they d- don't want to promote and build out Afrikaner culture. We are not going to give them the right to residency. And that is another important factor in this whole conversation about, is it about race? Or is it about or is culture? It about culture? And that's very, very important because a lot of people think a white skin qualifies you to live in Urania. That is not true. Urania is a goal-orientated community. Our goal is to promote and build out African freedom. And now that takes us to your next question, which is about how autonomous is Urania. So through the years, we realized that we need to take responsibility for ourselves as Afrikaners. Mm. A lot of people say, well, you can live your culture anywhere in the country. The thing is, we Afrikaners are a demographic minority, as we are in this country. We are a small group of people mm. in a large country with a big population. Mm. And people ask us, can, can your culture thrive anywhere else? And we say, no, our culture can only thrive in a place where we can, 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 can hold freedom in our own hands in terms of uh, our culture, our religion, and, and um, our way of life in a specific area. So two things happen then. One thing is we take responsibility, which is a word that is not nearly used enough in this country. And secondly, we can build institutions that deliver services to ourselves. One of those services that we deliver, uh, or one of those responsibilities that we take up, is to hold our own elections. So that comes from a court case that we had in 2000 with the, with the state, yeah. where they wanted to, um, uh, well, well the, 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 the new uh, municipal system was phasing in. And Rania said, listen, we've been delivering our own services since our inception. We want to continue to choose local representatives in our municipality in a local way. And we in the state actually um, came to a conclusion outside of court. We signed a, a deal mm-hmm. that Urania can deliver its own services, elect its own uh, officials representing us. So there's no party politics in Urania's um, uh, municipal government. We can write our own municipal bylaws. We can collect our own municipal taxes, levies. You collect your own taxes as well? 
yeah, municipal levies. Yeah, and then you've got your own bylaws. You've got your own municipality, basically, that does not that's function right. within the South African context, if they have to. That's very, very important because that is one of the ways that we're on our take responsibility. And very important there as well as we do not get one cent of funding from the state. So help me understand, no funding from the from the state. But okay, so you're you're saying so much, as I said. But but oh, so if I had to put it in simple English, you've got your own IEC. So yes, you have your own version of your IEC, and with your yeah. own version of your IEC, you get to elect who gets to be your representatives. Very important. Okay, but and I, then does that mean that how far does it go? Because you mentioned municipality, so is yeah. it that and municipality covers local government? So does it go as far as who would be, for example, the leader or president of Orania? Yeah, so that goes that far. But important is to understand that Orania is not an isolated community. It is still a part of of our surroundings. It's still part of the bigger picture. It's still part of of this country, and that means Orania citizens that want to can still vote in national elections. But but regarding municipal elections in our neighboring municipality, yeah. we voluntarily said, we, in, in, in a good faith, we went and we said we won't vote in those elections because we don't want to tell our neighboring municipality who, who, who their representatives are, but, but our own country want to decide who, who our representatives are. So, so it's very important to understand that Urania is not isolated. Urania is part of a bigger uh, a, a bigger area geographically, politically. It takes part in things that as current events mm-hmm. and so on. But on a local level, we say we take responsibility for ourselves. So, so you, yes, you enjoy you semi-autonomy. Are, so you've got your own, you, you can collect your own taxes, basically. If I to, again, yeah. simple English, you've got your yeah. own SARS. Uh, no, we have our own municipal levies. Sadly, we don't have our own SARS because we still um, pay taxes income taxes and VAT and so on to the government, yeah. South African government. Yeah. However, we receive nothing in terms of municipal funding back. Our roads, we pay for ourselves. Our sewage, we pay for ourselves for that infrastructure. Power and electricity, we pay for ourselves. Everything that we build here is built not only with our own money, but also with our own hands. <clears throat> and that comes back to the idea of not misusing people and also taking responsibility in terms of of what we call our own labor. And I think that's one of the reasons why Urania is such a good uh, um, example of social cohesion. And because there's social cohesion and low levels of internal stress <clears throat> in a functional municipality mm-hmm. that delivers services that grows with 10% of the population every year, that, grow, that grew um, with uh, 25% of new businesses last year, with that functioning municipal system, and low levels of internal stress. We have the self-confidence as a, as a community to speak in good faith to other communities because we are not, we, we don't feel repressed and we function and there's social cohesion. And for those reasons, as a whole, the community as a whole also feels that self-confidence and we can speak with good intentions to other communities as well and also give them the Orania recipe to use for themselves. I think it's important. People must take up this idea for responsibility, whether you be from a, uh, whatever culture group. Take up this responsibility. Stop waiting for the state. Rather take responsibility on your own terms. So help me um, understand this as well. I mean, and I know that we're going to be going back and forth and back and forth, you and I, and we're going to open the lines because I know that we've got many people wanting to, to weigh in on this conversation. Just when when there was a transition, because the government held elections in 1994, right? Though the beginning of transitions and negotiations were from the 1991, 1990, so to say. But these elections were held in 1994, which allowed for the African National Congress to be in power for the first time in this democracy. Did the ANC have a meeting or some kind of a agreement with Orania about its sustainability and how it would exist in the way that it does right now? Did you have meetings with members of the ANC or members of the incoming government at the time around Orania? Because I can bet you, I'm sure there were many questions about this semi-autonomous community. That is a great question. And the reason why it is a great question is that it refers back to my previous point of Orania not in isolation. Orania understands the bigger picture. And for that reason, 
um, we had multiple representatives in different capacities mm-hmm. uh, in, in that period. Some of them from the more conservative politics, some of them from, from newly created uh, parties, some of them uh, people like Dr. Chris Uesta and Professor Karl Bosov representing Urania. Mm-hmm. What also happened is that President Nelson Mandela flew in, landed in Urania by helicopter, mm-hmm. spoke to the people, and then and, and he also said he had a very warm wel- welcome in Urania. Then he had a conversation and some tea and cook sisters with uh, Betty Verwoerd, which was... Yes, can uh, I just ask that you, ta- you take a breath for me? We're going to come back. I want you to finish and expound on this clearly. We need to go to the news. Um, okay. We're still in conversation with the head of the Orania movement. It's one let Let's get you latest now in Power News with Thomas White. Urgent. Topical. Timely. Power 98.7. Getting you talking about what matters. It is 27 minutes to go before the top of the hour. We're in conversation with Jos Stradam, who's the head of the Orania movement. We're understanding Orania this afternoon, an in-depth analysis, first-hand account of uh, Orania. Jos, before we went into the news, you were talking to us about how uh, our late head of state, Nelson Mandela, flew into Orania, had a cook sister, in a, and he flew in by a helicopter. What happened? Yes, I had a, had a conversation with, with, with uh, the people of the community. Mm. And um, after that, interestingly enough, multiple uh, big political figures visited Urania or were in conversation with Urania. And actually, uh, the parliament passed a a memorandum Mm. which uh, was signed by Valdi Musa at that stage. By Valdi Musa? Really? Yes. Okay. About uh, what was stating that the pursuit of Afrikaners to seek self-determination in the Northern Cape, the northwestern part of the Northern Cape, is a legitimate pursuit. And that is actually, uh, people can actually look that up online on Google. Um, so it's very important. But what is more important than that? And I think that is a, 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 some, some reality that a lot of people of South Africa need to understand. And that is, we have a lot of rights in the Constitution. Everybody's got rights. We've got the right to clean water. We've got the right to proper housing. We've got the right to safety. But who gives us that right? We need to take up the responsibility. And that's exactly what Orania is saying. Yeah. You're, when you're so, saying that a lot of the political figures keep, kept coming to visit Orania, who? Like who? Which political fi- which, which, which people? I mean, you mentioned Nelson Mandela. You mentioned Valdo yeah. Musa with the signing of the legitimizing mm, mm. of Orania. Who else came to visit Orania? Well, I think an important one now, which was uh, recently again uh, in the news a lot, was uh, Jacob Zuma during his presidency. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, then uh, uh, Julius Malema visited Urania as well, okay. um, and there was there was other political figureheads we had we've had we have had conversations with uh, 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 President Thabo Mbeki after his presidency. Really, uh, we continue to stay in conversation with this whole idea of Afrikaners as a people of Africa. We have been here for 400 years. We're part of this continent, and we. Uh, a lot of people tell us, go back to Holland. We're not Hollanders. We, we, we Afrikaners. Mm. We belong here. And um, we, we also have the right to live here and prosper here and so on. And what, what we're saying as Urania is the way to do that is through com- communities that is at peace with themselves and have good relations with other communities. And this entire idea, we, 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 we uh, speak about a South Africa that is a community of communities. And that so means, do you see yourself as a part of South Africa, a diverse South Africa? Do you see yourself as yes. part of a South Africa? We see ourselves geographically and in the other sense, part of South Africa. We are citizens of this country as well. We see ourselves as part of, of, of South Africa. But more importantly, we see, see ourselves as Christians. We see ourselves as Afrikaners. Oh. We see ourselves as Uraniers. And that means we, we can have a lot of identities. And... On some, for example, our Christianity, we put the highest uh, amount of importance in our culture and so on. And that means that um, Urania, as a home to, uh, to, to Christian Afrikaners, mm. can be at peace um, with ourselves and, and, and with, with the bigger South Africa, but not if we're denied the right to live, not yes. if we're denied the right to prosper. Then we can't. Then we... Then, then there's always going to be friction. Yeah, I, I hear if what you're are... saying. What, what, did you ever have any form of, did the ANC government ever come to you and say the land that was bought by 
Carl, Professor Karl Boschow, Dr. Chris Yuster, as well as Sabra. The land that was bought was bought during the time of apartheid. It was bought, um, you know, from from the National Party. And now you're using it as, as you know, to semi to make yourself semi-autonomous. You need to be able to give the land back so that it can be a part of South Africa or a part of some of the municipalities in the Northern Cape. Did anybody, any of the, the government members come to you and say, guys, we need to get this land back because it was acquired during apartheid time from an apartheid government? No, no, they have not. And the reason for that is we have good conversations also with government, which is, is based on good fight, good, uh, good faith uh, uh, interaction and conversation. They have not said that our um, our uh, transaction of, of buying Urania is still legitimate. It's legitimized by um, by law in terms of uh, the legality of uh, of the transaction, as are many other transactions. So uh, so and that's the the one part of the answer. But a very important other part of the conversation is in regards to things like changing Section 25 of the Constitution, communal land. As the, for example, the Zulu, the Zulu Trust, and Urania, which is also communal land where a community lives, cannot be expropriated. So that is very important, and and I think that realizes itself, it manifests itself mm. in this whole idea of in this area we live and work. If you read the Freedom Charter, there's something very important written in there: the sweat of the people that falls on the land, those people shall rule the land. That's also true for Rania. Because we do our own work, because we live in this area, which is our area, we, we, we sweat and we build here. That is legitimized in that, um, let's call that, uh, de facto uh, understanding of, of, of the contract that is Urania. And that de facto understanding of Urania was the fact that yeah. the transaction was legitimized and it's still legitimate. So if I had to say to you, you're, you're able to pull out the receipts, you're able to look back at us and say, but hold on here, South Africans, the Nelson Mandela government legitimized the existence of Orania as a semi-independent community. We, we, we can produce the original um, uh, document of the, of the buying of Orania. And on that, a lot has been, been built. And on that foundation of a legitimate transaction, yes, yeah. we, can, we can. And we, we also keep very, very good record of everything administratively that we do, everything that we do in Orania, from service delivery to the transaction, selling, selling plots and selling, selling houses to people and building and growing farms and crops, everything is kept under very good administration so that we have archives, so that we have something to refer back to if there's questions about anything, yeah. because legitimacy of contract is found in the trail that it left in terms of the documentation of it. I can't argue with you there, but you still have not answered my question. Do you do you guys have your own currency and do you have your own flag? Yeah, important, very important. Why why do Orania have its own flag and its own currency? First first thing to answer there is that the ura, which we use as a way to trade, is not a currency. Um, only the Reserve Bank can make a currency or can print print a currency. The ura is an internal coupon system which guarantees. Um, lower levels of uh, violent crime because nobody is going to put a gun to your head to take URAS, which is a coupon system, mm-hmm. and, and spend it somewhere else so that it helps um, uh, keeping Urania safe. Mm-hmm. It is a way of expressing our culture, things that are culturally important to us. It is a way of stimulating our economy. And it's a lot of, a lot of other things as well, something that we're extremely proud of. It's something that uh, the tourists, because Urania has a very active tourist economic sector. Tourists take it out of Urania and exchange it for rent and so on and so on. The important thing is, it's all those things, but it is also not a currency. It's a system that we use like there are many systems that people can use. Is it supported the by flag, the Reserve Bank? Oh, yes, because it's, uh, it's um, uh, 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 backed by rent. So yes, it is indeed. And also our local bank, we don't have an apps or a SMB or other commercial bank. We have our own bank. Okay. Um, and that is also the most successful cooperative bank in South Africa in terms of size. And it's won multiple awards from the Reserve Bank. So that is what I mean when I say Urania has got institutions that we are proud of. Successes that we built over a span of 30 years, we're extremely proud of. And that, that, that is that, that kind of thing.
All right. Yes, we've got a few people wanting to weigh in on this and ask you a couple of questions. Zero eight six one nine eight seven triple zero. We've got Yus Stradam, the head of the Oranya movement. What do you have to ask? Let's go to Midrand. Hi, Ndogozo. Hi, Faith. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Absolute pleasure, ma'am. Go ahead. Yes, and and greetings to Mr. Juice there. Look, I think what we can say about this, it, in a summary from what I, I've listened to, you know, you steal a car. You convert it, you pimp it to a point where you are able to sell ice cream using the same car. And you tell me that the ownership of that car now is yours. But unfortunately, with this case of Orania, it sounds like the engine number still belongs to the real owner. But I'm not there. I'm just a bit concerned because from what I hear from Mr. Juice, you know, he, there's an emphasis of Christianity that is um, obviously the religion of choice mm. in, in, in this area called Orania. I, I think also we need to remind him that this country went through apartheid and Christianity was used as a religion in which we know today that uh, the suffering of this country, uh, it was uh, sugar-coated in Christianity. So, so with that, I, I, I don't think we should um, dwell too much. But however, it's correct with the rights of everybody in this country. Um, everybody right to this and that. But I think they are just probably on a European beef because when Orana was envisaged, uh, it was pre us going to democratic dispensation. You know? so I have to leave it there, Mama. But yours, can I ask that you also hold your comments until the end? We're going to try yeah. to get through as many calls as possible. Just jot them down okay. and then we'll, we'll have this conversation. <laughs> Senzo in Rodebot, hi. Hi, Senzo. All right, got to move on. David in Pretoria, hi. Hi, Faith. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You know what? I've got no much to say except to... The guy has just spoken the truth. This is sufficient to the South Africans, especially we blacks, that we have been sold out before by the... I'm an, I'm, a, I'm still a member of the ANC. Mm. I've been a member of the ANC before. Mm. Even during that time, even before my Nelson Mandela's time, mm. you know, before the ANC took over. But I feel this is the time for South Africans, black South Africans, to just say, ANC sold us out, and let's get someone someone who's honest, who's pro-black to rule us. If the South Africans cannot understand now, by now, from what that guy's saying, if they don't get it, they will never get it. We have- got it, David. Got to run. Malu Sintwane, hi. Hi, uh, how are you? Good Chris? and you, sir. Go ahead. Uh, fine. Yeah, I think maybe the first thing that we need to, uh, for us to understand the origin and why Orania is existing, maybe next time bring us the origin and existence of Lesotho in South Africa so that we can have a balance of understanding, so that we can be able to move to the right direction. But up to so far, I think I see no problem with the existence of Orania. They steal nothing from us. They have no impact on our existence and our success. So let, let's give them away. They are, not, they are stealing nothing from us than our leadership who are stealing from us. So I have no problem with that. I congratulate them with their success up to so far. And they seem to have no problems the way we have problems with our own South African, our own South African leaders. They are also in South yeah. Africa, Malusi, but I hear your point. Let's go to the Houting Education MEC, Pangazali Sufi. Good afternoon. Hi. MEC? All right, we're going to Hi, try. Faith, are you there well? you go. You're here. Um, I'm very well, thank you. We're having a conversation with about Orania, with the head of the Orania movement, U.S. Stradom. We're unpacking a lot today. What would you, you know, you've spoken quite extensively about this and you've, you've made your point known about this. Can I just understand from your views as not only as, you know, from an official government perspective, but as a member of the African National Congress, what are your sentiments Africa, regarding what are your sentiments regarding Orania? South Africa belongs to all who live it. There must be no inch of a land, whether it's private or public, that cannot be accessible to South Africans. We allow that we are betraying a cause for an unracial South Africa. We can't have a, a portion of a country that have its own flag, its own currency, its own curriculum and its own rules. We can't have a two-state. Now that they've tasted Orania, what are they looking for now? They want the entire Western Cape to be independent from South Africa because we've allowed this. 
you can't have a section of our society that believes that you must speak a certain language for you to recite with them, or you must accept that whites are superior before you can recite with them. Faith, we allow this. I can tell you we are betraying the course of what we wanted as a country to build a truly non racial And it's not the first time. During the fight against apartheid, the people that were fighting that you must chase the Boers and, and chase them to the sea. There are some people who were even saying one settler, one bullet. What did we say? We said no. They are fellow South Africans who can live together, grow this country together, share the skills, share everything. Mm. But there is a portion in our country where people believe they can modernize apartheid and make it a nice thing that can be acceptable in a democratic society. There must be no area that must be a no-go area in our country. You know, MEC, as, you know, as you're speaking about this and during the conversation we've also had with Joost, it looks as though the ANC are the ones that allowed this to happen. They further legitimized it, right? So there's the visit of the helicopter visit by uh, the former late president, Nelson Mandela. Their various uh, uh, Tabombeki, also during his tenure as the president, went to, to Orania. There's Jacob Zuma, who also went to Orania. Vali Musa also legitimized Orania. They're sitting with receipts around which political figures actually brought and and almost seem to endorse the existence of Orania does it not go back to the African National Congress for them to take ownership on legitimizing the existence of Orania we know what was the purpose on an eve of democracy did we have blacks to fly aeroplanes on an eve of democracy did we control the intelligence of this country on an eve of an election did we control the army On an eve of democracy, did you control the Reserve Bank? On an eve of democracy, did you control the police and many other institutions? The answer is simply no. We had to have a transitional arrangement. And within that transitional arrangement, there was this uh, request by the Afrikaners for us to cross that line to ensure that there's democracy. That's why we are quoting the incidents that you are quoting. They've outlived their time. We now have the capacity to run the police. We have the capacity to run the intelligence of this country, the Reserve Bank of this country, many other institutions. And that is why we have to reverse that decision. There was a reason, there was a purpose why that that, uh, decision was taken. We could not, even after democracy, to say to white people, because we're oppressing us, come to the township, we'll take over your houses, we'll take over your properties, we'll take over your bank accounts. We couldn't purely because we felt that there is an urgent need to build a solid foundation for a truly non-racial South Africa. But if you see the conduct and the behavior of these people, regardless of an extension of the, of, of the olive branch, regardless of the extension of reconciliation to them, what are we getting in return? Insult. Actually, they are growing bigger by day to insult and declare that they are not part of this country called South Africa. You can't allow faith. You can't. And you allow this. Today we are speaking about Orania. There will be a full attacker worse than Pretoria. There will be something in the Western Cape. There will be something in Limpopo. You can't, we come from Bantu stands. We know the pain of a Bantu stand. We know the pain of being discriminated. We can't allow this. It must be stopped on their track. Um, and it, it must be stopped now. We actually, even to give their oxygen for them to come to your studio and speak, and insult us further. It's really something that they don't acknowledge, that you've got wounds that they must not reopen. And we've got the capacity, the skill, the mandate, and the legitimacy Mm. uh, to intervene on this kind of things. They must do it on their own, and they are stealing Africans and using it as right-wingers as if it's their own language. Africans belong to all of us. It doesn't belong to them alone. Uh, MEC, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to this. Just, we've had this conversation. Yeah. You're hearing the different perspectives coming in. What yeah. do you say to that? Yeah, I, I want to start by reacting to two things. The first lady that called, mm. uh, speaking about Christianity, and then the MEC now speaking about Afrikaans that belongs to, to everyone. If it belongs to everyone, and it should be used in a responsible manner, it means also that Afrikaners have the right to not only protect it and build it out, our language that we love and our Christianity that's important to us as well, very important, we also have that right. 
Now the MEC says that uh, the dream, the dream of United South Africa was destroyed. How was it destroyed? It was not destroyed by a small community in the Northern Cape. It was destroyed by a lot of things. People using racial friction to further their own political ag- agendas. People using the money of the taxpayers of South Africa corruptly. That destroyed the United South Africa. Urania and other communities like Urania, as I said, near many, the Kosa community, which we have a relationship with, that is the antidote. As a journalist once described Urania as the antidote to apartheid, because Urania is not only taking responsibility on local level, we're teaching other communities to do it as well. If the politicians of this country will not deliver services to its people, if the politicians of this country seems to be corrupt, using taxpayers' money for things, and then want to throw all that in Urania's face, a small community that's look, looking after its own, that has a clean audit in our uh, municipality every year, which proven that we can work with other communities, which proven that we can take responsibility for ourselves and others, which proven that we can behave locally and internationally, not only the, 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 the government, but also role players locally and internationally in the political spectrum. If we've proven all that, and a politician says that Urania is the problem, then he is definitely wrong. So you feel and like the, feel the politicians are being hypocritical because they legitimized the existence of Urania in the first place? Definitely, but not only that. There's so much going on in South Africa that causes friction, that causes tension, that makes people unhappy, poor service delivery, corruption, and so on. And while all that is happening, someone wants to use Urania as a play ball in a political game, the only community that takes responsibility fully for itself. I do not think that is fair in any regards, anyways. Mm. Rather me, than denying people their right to a cultural existence, yeah. living out something that we are proud of, rather than that, people should focus on doing a good job in government and maybe a good government can unite South Africa. Is there a swart gevaar in Orania? A, a swart gevaar? Mm. Orania is not into screaming wolf, wolf in order to get people um, uh, fired up for political agendas. It's not what we do. Mm. Obviously, Orania as a community with um, comments from people that want to, 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 to uh, uh, enact violence against Orania. Obviously, we have a local uh, security company, which is legal, which is registered, which helps protect our people from crime, which helps the neighboring uh, towns as well. With that, where if they have incidents or the South African police need help, which has happened, but Urania is not into creating a narrative where we uh, must unite against some kind of enemy um, just, to, just to get our people to, to exist and work together. Our un- um, united Urania is built on s- positive things that we share, such as religion, language and culture. Yes, take a breath for me. We're going to take a break and then we're going to come back. So many calls. So many calls. Let's talk. Listening to Power Lunch with the Queen. 12 to 3 p.m. We are understanding Urania. That's what we're doing today. We're understanding Urania. What do you have to say, Power Fam? Let's go to Mpo in Pretoria. Hi, Mpo. Hi, Mpo. Okay, Mpo. Let's go to Lisiba in Mabopani. Hi, Lisiba. What's happening now? Lisiba, hi. Okay, let's go to Nana in Swane. Hi, Nana. Hello, Faith. How are you? I am very well. Thanks to you, Mama. Go ahead. Um, okay, I'll try to be quick and straight to the point. Yes, ma'am. You know, but yeah, my my first comment is that I'm I'm just shocked by what I've just heard, <laughs> you know. Um, but I have one question is what was the exchange or, or, or the deal? He says uh, some of the leaders came and they legitimized Orania, you know. I mean, for them to have this liberty to have their own currency, to have their own semi-autonomy, as you put it, to even be able to 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 work with the Baragini, the bank, the Reserve Bank. What was the deal? You know, yeah. What what was the exchange? What was expected in exchange from them to have? That kind of liberty. Let's I'm ask them. Well, no, no, no. Let's, let's have... ask them. Let's, with the time that we have together, let's ask them. Just was there a deal made? What was the deal? Was there a negotiation? What was part of this negotiation? Yeah, my answer might surprise you, because yes, there was something that we had to do in return. It was something, and that something 
is not what the listeners expect in terms of a contract or a negotiation or, uh, you know, exchange of money or something like that. Yeah. The lady referred to liberties. The Constitution grants everybody in South Africa liberties. Everything that we have, from the deals that we made in terms of local economic development that we made with each other, from the URA to our local bank, everything that we did is based not on liberties, not on privileges. It's based on responsibilities. So what we had to do in exchange was to stay up late at night and make plans, was to get up early in the morning and work hard and get ideas, interpret laws, get people to, to help us uh, create Urania. There was no exchange of uh, money or making of deals in order to give us special privileges that the rest of the country's people do not have. The only thing that we did was to focus our entire effort into building something for ourselves and to building a place where we can thrive and our culture can thrive and, 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 and so on. Remember, Urania was arid. It's a semi-desert area. In the summer, it gets up to 45 degrees Celsius. And in the winter, um, minus 10 degrees Celsius. It's cold and it's hot. It's arid and it's dry. It's not an easy place to live. Everything that we've built, we built by taking responsibility and doing the hard work ourselves. Yes, I have to go to the news. But when I come back, can you answer the question around who did you sign that deal with? Who signed that deal? It's two o'clock. Let's get your latest now in Power News with Thomas White. This is Power 98.7. And now you're listening to Power Lunch with Faith Mangobe, 12 to 3 p.m. Taking your calls on 0861-987-000. Seven minutes after two on this thoughtful Thursday afternoon. Thank you so much for staying with us in conversation on Power Lunch on Power 98.7. Now we're talking. We're talking all about Orania. We're still in conversation with your Stratum, agreeing to, to be with us. And also on the line, we've also got the Gauteng MEC for Education, Panyazali Sufi. Yes, I asked you a question before we went into the news. Who signed the deal um, to allow the autonomy with the people of Orania? Well, the, the land was bought by contract by uh, people and it was signed by Professor Karl Bosov and, uh, Bosov and others um, representing the Orania movement and representing uh, what we call Flaky Scroll on the block, which is uh, which is the name of the of the local uh, municipality. That was signed by them in terms of the physical contract, mm-hmm. uh, and and the rest of of the contract of uh, of our uh, um, of the local government is something that is uh, that found its life in a reality that was created in the past thirty years. By who? Well, by, by the reality that was created by the people of Urania, by taking up the responsibility to build this community, to liaise with government, and so on and so forth. From so, that, so my question is around the sustainability of, of, of Urania, right? Yeah. So it could have been signed. You could have had the, the, the South African dispensation, the new government come in and say, actually, this is an illegitimate um, uh, uh, setup. It's an illegitimate community. We're doing away with it. It cannot exist. As to the MEC's point that it cannot exist, it's outlived its time. But that did not happen. 27 years yeah. on, the people of Irania yeah. are still sustainable. I'm asking yeah. you, who allowed that from government to continue? Well, who allowed that? Uh, it was allowed by it, it was allowed by the legality of the contract in which Irania was bought. That's who allowed it, and, and that with the the uh, the, the government uh, declaration that was signed by the parliament by Valdi Musa in terms of of, of uh, Afrikaner self determination in the in the in the Northern Cape. So that is the that is the signed document. The rest is just reality created by the people of Urania. Hmm. MEC, when when we're when we're listening to to this, you know, and and sometimes we need to have these uncomfortable conversations to understand the genesis. We cannot solve for something unless we understand where it comes from. How do we move forward? Is there a way of moving forward as a country? No, Urania will fall. It will go. They must get ready. They might have oppressed our par- our grandparents and succeeded. They might have oppressed our parents and succeeded. They tried to oppress us. We defeated them. They will never oppress our children and our children's children. Never. It will never happen. They must know Orania will go. Whether they can scream, shout, and quote whatever they want to quote, it will go. The reality is their faith. 
if, if it's a private institution, the constitution of the country supersedes anything. You can't go to a hotel, which is a private place, and say, I want to practice apartheid here because it's a private place. It doesn't work that way. The reality is that the law that established Orania, there was justification on an if of our elections. There was justification on an if of our freedom so that we can have this society to be part of a new South Africa. But they've repudiated that. So we basically it, it use was, them as a bargaining chip. It is, we needed to enter indeed, into, and to cross over into a new South Africa to say, and we needed to, say, to be able to build something. So, you know what, we're going to give a little. So you guys here, uh, Afrikaners, you can have Orania so that we can have the politics of the country and we can be governing the country. So that we can show them who we are. Because they thought we we're not human beings. They thought that after freedom, remember after freedom what they did? They stockpiled tin fish. They went into uh, mountains to hide. So we want to sh- wanted to show them that we are human beings. That is why after democracy, we wanted to demonstrate to them that we can live together, black and white. But it's clear they don't want to live with us. And we can't allow that. And we can't negotiate that. And we can't tolerate it. It must stop. And it must stop now. So they, they, they can scream and shout and think that if they quote corruption, it means that apartheid was better. We hated apartheid. We are still hating corruption. We'll fight corruption. That is why we've got legislation like the SIU, Public Protect. We, we established those institutions to fight corruption. So you can't have a, a sugar coat apartheid and want to equate it to, to corruption. As long as this democracy of corruption, it means apartheid was better. Both of them are wrong and they must be fought, regardless. Let me ask so, you this as a member of the ANC. Do you think that the ANC sold out here? We that going, we gave, we gave we are, away too much. We gave away too much power as African National Congress, if you're so looking that, at it. Yes, so that we can have this democracy. We can have this peace. Check other countries that have gone through violence. Where are those countries now? They're in Tatars. You can say whatever you want to say about this political movement called African National Congress. The reality <laughs> is it's only a portion of a country that must be stopped. All South Africans are staying together, going to school together, working together. So we must not be irritated by this minority that feels that they've got a, a passport or the right to dictate to all of us. They must know Orania is not going to last. It, we, some of us, we are putting a policy debate. We are going to the policy conference of the ruling party mm. uh, 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 next, to, uh, next year. We are going to argue that this thing must come to an end and it will come to an end. If this chap that is on the radio now, he must start to prepare to tell their children now that this thing is not sustainable. They must prepare to accept that they are part of this country. Our children must play together, dance together, go to school together and prepare this country together. If they think they can do it on their own with their own children, let them dream on. That dream on last. All right. So on the other side of it, I I want us to be able to take equal um, accountability for this because on one side there's Orania, but on the other side are those that are allowed for this to persist, right? So we cannot take them and remove them away from the conversation. So in your perspective then, MEC, was it a sellout or was it just a negotiation? And did the ANC make a mistake? Did the ANC make a mistake by allowing for the existence of Arania to continue? Because there was someone that allowed it to continue. Was it a mistake? Faith, it was not a mistake. I still support the decision our leaders took to allow this group to have what they have now. The purpose was clear, and I've indicated. We didn't have the control of the army, and they didn't want to cede power. Mm. They didn't want to surrender power. What do you do? You demonstrate to them that we are not animals, we are human beings. But what are they doing? After we've demonstrated that we can live together, these people who practiced apartheid, who oppressed us, who exploited us, who took the minerals of this country for their selfish interests, and they have the nerve today to speak about corruption, who went to have loans, international loans, that benefited them on only. But we came into power and honored those loans, even though they didn't benefit our children and didn't benefit us. We did that for the sake of this country to prosper. But you can see from their attitude, you can see from what they are doing now, that they don't want to be part of an unracial South Africa. 
They want to be on their own and hide behind the broomstick of a language called Africans, purely because that's the only way they feel they can abuse our constitution to have their existence. We will expose them. Whether they're in Orania, they're in Western Cape, they're in Mpopo, they're in our farms, their time is over and they're not going to succeed. The only way to succeed is to build a truly non-racial South Africa that is acceptable to all South Africans. I hate racism with a passion, but I'm addicted to non-racialism. If they feel they will survive, time will tell. Just maybe you can you can expound this for us and 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 you know as we're wrapping the conversation around what would you like people to actually take away from this conversation the people uh, well, I, firstly yeah. firstly i think uh, i speak on regards of myself and um but i also speak on regards for, for most of south africa that is uh, applauding the fact that uh, the mec just uh, said on, on on radio that um they, they will commit themselves to uh, to work corruption out and to to uh to, uh, to 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 get rid of that. <clears throat> so we, we we do appreciate that promise that was made on air, and we're looking forward to see his effort in, in ruling out corruption. But I want to focus on Urania. What what bothers me is that the MEC is so stuck in the idea of apartheid that he cannot phantom Urania as a non-apartheid town. He cannot phantom that Afrikaners also have the right to exist. Why is he not going into Zululand or Koza communities and telling them? Uh, they must be forced into uh, in different schools where they denied mother tongue education. Urania is pro-mother tongue education for all. Urania stands for Zulu children having the opportunity to learn in Zulu and Koza ch- children the opportunity to learn in Koza. As are we pro-Afrikaner children learning in Afrikaans. It is good, fundamental right guaranteed by the Constitution. But Mr. Minister uh, MEC uh, Lesufi wants to take that away for political points with the upcoming election in mind, it seems. Urania hasn't bothered anyone. We continue to build a successful story here, and suddenly when it's election year, there's a lot of noise. But Urania will continue to build. Urania will continue to liaise with other communities, other cultures. We will continue to build our, our uh, place here, which we rightfully own. And what bothers me even more is that the MEC is so worried about a small community in a small part of South Africa, which takes responsibility for itself, that is seemingly sweeping all the other problems of South Africa under the rug. Here is a community that takes responsibility for itself. Here is a community that prospers. Here is a community that's not oppressing anyone, not even in terms of menial labor inside the, inside the town. But now the MEC wants to go and make, uh, make a way, do a way with the conversations that we had with figures like Nelson Mandela, because he thinks he knows better than, than the early ANC in terms of Urania's right to exist. So no, Urania's Urania, right to exist goes back to Nelson Mandela, doesn't it? Yeah, indeed. It, well, Urania's right to exist is, is fundamentally uh, a right that we believe as Christians. Afrikaners have the right to believe as, uh, under God, as have all communities and all cultures have that fundamental right. Oh, just help me out here. I know that you keep referring to all work as no menial work, but your the people that work in Orania, are they are they black people? Can black people work in Orania? And do you allow them to work in Orania? The people of Orania do all their own work. So it's all Afrikaners doing their own work. Yeah. As I said, from cleaning toilets, cleaning drains, digging digging foundations for the houses that are being built, yeah. taking responsibility for economic growth, building businesses, all Afrikaners doing it. Um, even cleaning houses, everything. Oh, even helpers are, are white or are yes, Afrikaners. Afrikaners. Yes, working in our own gardens, cleaning our own houses. We believe it is the ethical and the right way to continue. And it's, for, uh, by our account, the only way for South Africa uh, forward. Uh, if, 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 the, if the MEC wants to speak about equality, maybe you should focus on things like labor issues in South Africa, which is a problem. Inequality starts there. And here is the Afrikaner community that do all their own work. Everything. Eddie in Edenvale. Hi. Oh, hello, Faith, and yes, good afternoon. Go ahead. You know, I'm listening to uh, MEC Lesufi. I mean, he doesn't inspire confidence at all. W- would you create a problem and claim to fix it at a later stage? Fortunately, some of us are old enough to remember 
that this Orania was not even an issue during Condesa. The fact that ANC decided to make concession on it, and by the way, that Orania is the size of a rugby field. So why are we gung ho about this non-issue, really? Lisufi has more, I mean, more important things to be worried about. But all he's worried about is worried about Orania. And by the way, prior to 1994, there were there were no gated communities. And then come 1994, gated communities are created, and the very same ANC politicians left all black people who are suffering in Alexander. They went for gated communities. Those black people are asked to produce their IDs. What is the difference between Orania and, and, and Waterfall? A black person can enter there. They have to produce an ID. The system must go do work for, for people, for black people, and show the Africans that we can do it ourselves. Let's go to Lisiba and Mbabupane. Hi. Hi, good afternoon. Yes, sir. Um, Tatele Sufi is trying to maintain Tawaiwa Nayamaka, or ANC is a revolutionary organization. This thing is predicated on the meeting that was held in 1994, uh, I mean 1984 in, in Zambia, uh, where the Africana was promised in that meeting, what the Africana wanted, led by the leader of the Brigade Board, who was then the rector of Stellenbosch, uh, that they wanted their culture, only their culture, their language, and their peace. That is all they wanted, and it was guaranteed by that meeting, which was led uh, by Tabombegi there. And the revolution of the ANC is a progressive federal party funded and promoted uh, 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 theatrics because that the the precursor to the ANC, which was the UDF, was funded by PFP uh, by Anglo American through PFP. And the leader, you will know, this is common sense. That was negotiating between ANC and South Africa. Mm-hmm. Is Frederick van Slabert, who was then a PFP person, and it was only after '84 that ANC became something else. That is why now the, both these parties on the opposition can quote the Freedom Charter, which is a white document by anyway. So Ndateli Sufi is trying to renege out of a promise he knows nothing about. Easy in Soshanguve, hi. Hi, um, I'm also baffled and astonished by the explanation beyond Ndateli Sufi. I've always been his biggest friend, but um, I don't think he's a very credible person to be even given so much time on this subject because he himself is tiny. Because because once he speaks, we think about the corruption in the education department. We say, these guys are doing something good. But the topic started very well with you, Faith. I want to ask the gentleman from Orania, um, are they a municipality? Are they recognized by our democratic government? Because if we were to follow the Delisufi's logic, He's saying we were fighting against discrimination and apartheid, but we had to bargain and give people a right to discriminate on the basis of culture, on the basis of race, on the basis of uh, religion, just to have a bargaining uh, process going forward so that we can be in power. That, that for me doesn't make sense because you're trying to, to fight something. And secondly, the, the NC after 1994, or even in between during the 26 years, have they tried to take this organization, this private own land or organization or entity to court to test the constitutionality of their discriminatory policies on the basis of culture. Because I need to state that what you are saying, gentlemen, I forgot your name. You are doing wonderful yes. work. We want to develop. We are tired of corruption because we can praise democracy for all we like. Some of us are at home. We're feeling the pain. We're feeling the pinch of economic squeeze. We're feeling, we're seeing corruption. Are dirty. Everything. Nothing works in this country. I hear you. Just as we wrap up, we have to go. But as we wrap up, did anybody, did the ANC government or did the ruling party government take anybody or attempt to take you guys to court to reclaim your land? Um, Or was there any form of, you know, yeah, any form of, hey, guys, you need to reintegrate and be part of a non-racial democratic South Africa with a municipality that feeds all and not to have your own municipality? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the questions. I'm going to reply shortly. In five minutes time, I'm on Newsroom Africa, I and I need to get yeah. on that interview. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reply shortly. Very important line of questioning, because Urania inherently is the rec- recognition of Afrikaner culture. It's building it out.
that is not discriminatory. It's not discriminatory to just inherently be an Afrikaner, as it is not discriminatory to inherently be a Zulu or a Kosa, Venda or Pedi. It is something to be proud of. Culture is something to be proud of. And for that reason, Orania is also, also proud of, of, of our Afrikaner culture. It's not discrimination. It's taking up responsibility inside a certain framework. But Orania has not been taken to court um, bar the, the, the 2000 court case, which was settled outside of court with the state regarding our municipal state. For the rest, there's no reason for anybody to take Orania to court because Orania is not doing anything illegal. Everything we do is 100% legal. It's granted in the framework of, of the Constitution, or uh, Section 235 of the Constitution, guarantees the right of cultural self-determination. And for that reason, nobody will take us to court because there is nothing to be going to court to. And more, Rania is also in a good relation with, uh, with, with our surrounding municipalities. We have good liaison with government. Mm. We speak openly because we have nothing to hide. We have a, a proven track record. That's the thing to be proud of. Has so, the President so no Sarabaposa been to Orania? Just as a curiosity, out of curiosity. Uh, say again? Has the President Sarabaposa been to Orania? Out of curiosity. Not, not yet, not yet. Not yet. Have you invited him? He, he, I'm sure sooner or later he will come and, and speak to the Afrikaners of Orania. Yes, thank you very much for your time. Certainly been an, uh, an insightful conversation. MEC Pangazali Sufi, thank you so much for your time and for weighing in on the subject as well. Power fam? As always, you know, we're nothing without you in this conversation. I, I, you get to, you get to make the the decision. All we can do is just give you the those two sides. Someone allowed for Orania to exist. Someone or someone's allowed for Orania to persist. Right? Do we become angry at Orania, or should we be angry at that? And also. Has Orania lost its relevance in a democratic dispensation? There's another question that you need to answer. Has it truly lost its relevance? Or can we learn something from the people of Orania around how to determine ourselves and be truly autonomous from government dependency? You be the judge. You've been listening to a Power 98.7 podcast. For more podcasts, visit power987.co.za or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.